saw that if we now have our base 5 number system, we're counting places, however many the number, the quantity may need. We're counting 1's here, then we're counting 5's, then 5 squared, 5 cubed, and so on as we need them, depending on the quantity. There's really no, okay, so in any place then, our options for uh, what this could be, well, I can't have 5 because then it rolls over to the next uh, place, so I'll have a 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. And those symbols evolved over time to what we have today. So these are our options for any single place. And you see the, num the, um, the number of options is the same as the base value, 5. Because I'm starting at 0, it goes up to 1 less than the actual base value. So 0 to 4. Now, nothing prevents us from looking at another uh, group size. Why 5? Well, the 5 sort of came from the African tribes and I just ran with it. But there's no reason it has to be 5. The Babylonians chose 60. Well, that's a little high for my liking. But we can choose other numbers. We can choose any base number. Choose any, let's say, base value. What about 6? What about 8? What about 12? What stops us from doing that? But then as the base value changes, if I have another one, then the options will change as well. For example, if I have a base uh, 7 uh, system, then I'm going to count in 7s. I'm going to count 1s. I'm going to count groups of 7, 7 squared, 7 cubed, and so on as I need it. And the options for every single place, the options will change 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, to 6. Because as soon as I have 7, then it rolls over to the next group. So the group size is actually kind of arbitrary that I can choose another one. And everything works the same, I just have to count according to that group size, that base value. So all we're going to do now is just let the base change. And every question will have its own base. And just practice that, but it works exactly the same as base 5. So we're, we're doing this all by example because there's no new uh, concept other than just noting that I'm counting in different powers of uh, powers of that specific base and the options change according to the base value. So let's just practice that and we'll see if there are any differences, anything we need to be concerned with. Exercise seven point dot. Seven. 7.7. That's a convert back and forth question. First, given a base value number, again it's indicated by the little subscript, which tells me the, how, what I'm, how I'm counting, what the places represent. Convert that to a decimal number. So I have 3315 base 8. So now I'm counting in eights, meaning this counts the ones, that counts the eights, that counts the eight squared, that counts eight cubed. So this represents, I'll do it over here, three groups of eight cubed, three groups of eight squared, one group of eight and five ones. Put that into your calculator and you get the number. Simple as that.
nothing new really other than counting now in eights instead of fives. What is the <coughs> answer that you get? 1,741. 1,741. That number does not have a subtruth because it's a decimal number. Though if you want to give it a subtruth 10, that will be okay as well. But we drop the subtruth and then agree that will be our decimal number. <coughs> Pretty straightforward if you followed along with what's been happening in the previous couple of uh, classes. Very little different. So I don't get tied up with the five, it can be anything. The five was just a convenient choice, nothing more really. We'll keep going with uh, B. B, I have three, two, one, three, base four. Notice that whatever the base value is, the digits cannot be that value or higher. So I can't have a five in here, or any, or four, or anything. The options are limited by the base value. So now this counts ones again. That counts the number of fours. That counts the four squared. That counts four cubed. So my representation is in decimal, calculated as three groups of four cubed, two groups of four squared, one group of four, and three little ones left over. Calculator says, okay. 240. Can anyone confirm her 240? Or we just accept it? Or is she streaking you? Oh, I did. Screw it up. This is 231. See, she was testing you. <laughs> of course, on purpose. 231. So, that, again, that's why showing a little bit of work just makes it safer that if that happens and it wasn't on purpose, I can still give you something because I can see that you know how to do it. It was just a little silly mistake. But if you just write 240 and nothing else, I have nothing to give you. Because you gave me nothing. 7550 base 9. Now we're going to keep the base value small, manageable. We're not going to go to the 60s and things like that. But you could technically have anything. This now counts. 1s. 9s. 9 squared, 9 cubed. So it is 7 plus, no, no, plus, 7 groups of 9 cubed with 5 groups of 9 squared with 5 groups of 9, that was supposed to be an S, and you should have heard of that, uh, plus 0 ones. Calculator says, it's actually too simple. I apologize. 5,553. 5,553. Yes? Uh, just a quick clarification thing. For the second step where we're doing like 7 times 9 cubed, can we reverse it to do Doesn't like matter. 0 times 10? Yeah. Um, I don't know why I do that. <coughs> because we tend to read and do stuff left to right. But in order to figure out what the places are, I do have to go right to left. Okay. So you might as well just write them right to left. It doesn't matter at all. I'm just adding them all together in the end anyway. Whatever feels the safer option to you. Any other questions or comments? I don't want to do too many examples. Three, I feel, uh, is a nice compromise. Now, in number two, we are given 5,094. And we want to represent that in different bases. First, base three. 5,094 would then have to be 
broken up so I can see, well, I don't even know how many places I need, uh, a place for the ones, then I count threes, then three squared, then three cubed, and if the number, if the quantity is big, I need to keep going and going and going. What is three to the four? Eighty-one? Oh, that's seriously small. Uh, what is three to the five? Two hundred and forty-three. That's also pretty small. So let's suppose you just guessed two hundred and forty-three, which is three to the five. What would that question mark value be? How many three to the fives can fit into five thousand and ninety-four? Well, you do 5,094 divided by 3 to the 5, and you get 20? What does that 20 tell you? 20 is not one of my digits, meaning the 3 to the 5 was not big enough. I can fit something bigger in. Well, it's three to the four. Uh, I mean, the four. Six, I mean. Seven twenty-nine. Three to the seven. Two thousand That's still good. Let's try three to the seven. How many times does three to the seven fit into five thousand and ninety-four? Yes. Two times. I have a digit for two. So that would be good. Then I have an amount left over. So the 5,000 amount minus 2 times, or minus this. What do I have left over? 715. 715. And then I just keep going. Write this down. Now 715 is how many groups of 3 to the 6? Who the six was? 720. 720. So clearly that's a little bit too big. But I do want to list it because that's a place. There's a place for the three to the six that I have to uh, keep uh, empty. So then I'll go down to three to the five. Still having 715 <coughs> left. How many times does 3 to the 5 fit into 715? Two. 2 times. And how much do I have left over? 229. Now it's important that we don't make a mistake sort of in the middle here because then everything after that is going to be wrong. Can anyone confirm 229? Um, is this 715? It's 720. It's 720. Yeah, Didn't someone say 715? Did I just hear that in my head? No one said 715. That was all me. Really? Wow, that's embarrassing. <laughs> I thought you said 3 to the 6 is 720. 729. 729. Wow, why did you say something here instead of waiting there? So this is all nonsense. So what is that number? 720. 720. Yeah. Where on earth did I get 750? Who knows? Uh, 3 to the 6, you said is 729. Okay, so the zero is still good. Now, I fit in two groups of three to the five into 720. How much do I have left over? What was it? You said correct, probably not. So from 720, take away two groups of three to the five. Two forty-four. I no, didn't. No. 
triple check that I'm hearing. Do 54? 33. See, clearly at my age, you know, the hearing is the first thing to go. Because I think that's what they say. I can't hear them. <laughs> so I keep going and going. This one's definitely a little bit more tedious in terms of the time that is required here. Why do I? Yeah, okay. Plus, now 234, well, 3 to the 4 is 81, so I can fit a couple in there. How many? Two, two. two groups of 3 to the 4. Um, you can also do it on the side here if you want to. How much do I have left? You can, this is a lot. It's up to you how much you want to write down. Uh, so I'm going to use 3 to the 5, and I have left. Uh, UC to the 4 at this point, and how much do I have left from 234? Hmm? 72. 72. Then I'm going to use 3 cubed, which is 27. How many 27s fit into 72? Two, so I can keep going here. Two times three to the three, and I have left fifteen. Eighteen. The triple verify what's happening here. Then I fit in three squared, which is nine. Two nines. I have nothing left. So that means no threes and no ones. Quite the process. A lot of opportunity for mistakes. So this number, base three, is two zero two 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 zero zero base three. And it's so long because base three doesn't give me a lot of options for every place. I have little groups, small number every time. So the representation gets really long. That was fun. No? It was fun for a while, and then my hearing let me down. What's going to happen when I'm actually old? Oh. That's a problem. Uh, B. Now, bigger base values will just make the representation uh, shorter, so it will be a little faster. Now, base 5. Now, oh, we've done base 5, but it's just another base, just as important as any other. So now I'm looking at groups of 5. Lucky I'm more familiar with 5. So I know that 5 to the what is the largest power that I can fit in? 5 to the 5? How many 5 to the 5 can I fit in? How many? Just one. Aww. How many do I have left over? Well, let's make a table. Why not? The table might be a little nicer. So uh, I have my digit, I have my, um, I guess, power of five, and I have what's left over. So right now, originally, the whole 1594 was left over. I fit in uh, one, five through the five, so this times this, take that away from the previous leftover amount, and I have leftover one. One thousand nine hundred sixty-nine. All right. Then I'm fitting in a power uh, to the five to the power of four. How many of these can I fit in? That's 625. A couple. 
two of them. How much do I have left over if I take two five to the fours away from 1969? It looks like 1,919. Like 1,000 left? Oh, it's 5 to the 4. Never mind. <coughs> 94. 94. Whatever I've left has to be less than 625. Otherwise, this isn't big enough. Um, then I go to 5 cubed, but I know that's 125, and I won't be fitting any of that into 94. So I go to 5 squared, which is 25, and I can fit in three of them for a 75. Seven, 94 minus 75? That becomes a little easier. What did I say? 75. 325 is 75. 325s is 75. 94 okay. minus 75 is 19. Running out of space a little bit. Uh, I think we're okay actually to keep going now. So uh, we don't really have to write that down, but I'm going to. Two groups of 5 to the 4. The zero groups of 5 cubed. Three groups of five squared. Now I have 19 left, so I can fit in three fives, and that will get you to 15, so I have four left over, or four ones. So the representation is one, two, zero, three, three, four, base five. I think there was three, five. Five. What? I've got three for my second number. Yeah. I'm sleepy. Yeah, me too. Which number? Which number? One, one, this one? Yeah. Yeah. Someone said two, though, no? No one said two, it was just me? They were wrong. <laughs> that means everything else is nonsense. No, but so when I wrote a two here, someone still left. subtracted three. But that's why you still have the thousand left over, and you're confused. So then we're like, no, it's actually not another bad, one. So it's another one. Oh, so I just update this yeah. to a three. Yeah, okay, that's not so bad. All right, all right. <coughs> we're of course doing all this on purpose to illustrate that this way to convert is much more tedious and it's much easier to make a mistake. Which means I have to be even more careful. But luckily in a test you're not communicating there that couldn't break down, it's just you in your head. So uh, if you go slowly enough it'll be fine. There's one more! Whew. Is time for one more? I hope so, yeah. Easy to make a little mistake, mainly because we're talking back and forth, and apparently my hearing is terrible. Uh, that makes it seem a little worse, perhaps. Now, base 7. Bigger base goes faster. So that's good. So let's just try this table. Maybe some people like the table. Not that you have to. So I have 5094. What is the highest power of 7 that can go in there? I don't know my powers of 7 that well. 7 to the 4. 4. How many of them can fit in? 2. 2. We're sure about the 2 now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Take that away and I have left. So again, 292. 292. Then 7 cubed. Now I'm not skipping any of them, even if it's a zero. 7 cubed. Hmm. What is 7 cubed? It's zero? Isn't it like 343 or something? 343. Oh, yeah. 
So that's too big. So I still have 292 left. Then 7 squared, which is 49. I can fit some 49s in there. How many? Five. Five 49s can go in, and I have what left? 47. 47. Seems big, but I couldn't fit another one in. Then I can fit in some sevens. Sevens in there, six of them for 42. So I have five left. Let's finish the table. And I guess ones, seven to the zero. Let's emphasize it here. One, seven to the zero. Uh, which will just be all five of them, and I have nothing left, so I'm done. That means that 5,094 by 7 is 20565 by 7. The bigger the base, the easier it is in terms of length, so that's kind of nice. If you see a base 3 number, you know it's going to be longer. That wasn't so bad. Yeah. The 7 helped. It went faster. Any questions about that? Different, maybe slightly different methods, I suppose, for the two conversion directions. Now it gets a little easier. Because for the arithmetic, we do not convert. We stay in that base value system. Meaning that in example, in the first example, if I'm working base 9, I'm only allowed to write the digits 0 to 8. Not converting it and then converting back. So, uh, 7.8. A, 6, 8, let's make it a little bigger here, 6, 8, 2, 6, base 9, plus 5, 1, 7, sorry, line them up, 3, base 9, you stay in that number system, so I'm counting in 9s. <coughs> 6 plus 3? But there's no 9 here. There is no word. There's no digit. There's no symbol for that quantity. 6 plus 3 is one group of 9 and nothing left over. Just like it was before for the 5s, but now 9s. So the 0 stays, and the 1 goes over. 1 plus 2 plus 7 in my language is 10. There is no 10 here. <coughs> 1 plus 2 plus 7 is what base 9? It's one group of 9 and one left over. That's the representation for what we call 10. And then I have 1 plus 8 plus 1 is another 10. 1 plus 6 plus 5? I have a word for that. <coughs> but here, we don't. What is that base 9? There's no 12 there. One, three. One group of 9, 3 left over. I find these much easier. The conversion that's annoying sometimes. I'm staying in the base. I just have to remember my base value and what I'm counting, and then stay within that. There's no real difference. I have a question. Yes. Are you ever going to give us like base six plus base nine? Or something? No, because then I do have to convert. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. So None of that. has to be the same throughout. Okay. Otherwise, I'm forced to convert, which is what I'm trying to avoid. Okay. So that's not going to happen. You get some interesting comparison questions in the additional exercises. And then you have to, either they're really simple, or you have to do some conversion so that they can match. Yeah. Uh, B. 
412 base 6 plus 3, 3, 4, 4 base 6. Okay, right to left. Math is always the same. It's just sixes now that I have to keep in mind. Two plus four? Uh, we call that six, but in this case, it's zero ones and a group of six carried over. Then again, one plus one plus four is what we call six, which is one group of six goes over and I have nothing left. One plus four is five, plus another three is eight, meaning one group of six carries over and two are left. And then one plus three is four. You just make groups of whatever the base value is. Oh, not too bad. We should also talk about the quiz at some point. Let's make sure we finish this first. That's what tomorrow is there for. Uh, next we have C, 1, 2, 2, base 3, plus 1, 2, 2, 0, base 3. So, 2 plus 0 is 2. I have a symbol for 2, so that's fine. 2 plus 2 is 4. There's no 4 here. That's one group of three and one left over. One plus two, one plus one plus two is another four. That's one group of three, one left over, and one plus one is a two. That was a little easier. Questions about addition? If you've done your review. With base five, this should not be any problem. I just remind I just have to remind myself of the new group signs. Now, uh, subtraction time, which we saw last time could be more fun. All right. A remember I don't want to be be high when I subtract because I need maybe some room to write down. Um, that may or may not be necessary for you, depends on how you do the borrowing. A is, uh, I don't want to start with A. Let's start with B. I do not have these in order of, of difficulty. I'm going to do B first. One, two, three, three, base four, minus, Three zero one base four. At four is a little big, but I did notice that. <clears throat> They're not necessarily more and more difficult as the question goes. So three minus one, two. Three minus zero, three. Two minus three, no. I need to borrow this one, which then becomes four individually. Or you can write one zero, but let's not. Let's try the rocks. So then four and two is six that I have. Take away three from, which is three. You can do whatever you want to indicate the borrowing or really just to keep track of the borrowing. I'm only interested really in two things, which is the answer, and that you didn't convert out of that base value system. How you represent these, as long as you don't have weird uh, symbols or digits that aren't allowed, really doesn't matter to me. It's just there to keep track of, so you don't have to do it in your head. Now let's do A which I think is a little more difficult in the borrowing uh, 
aspect. 6004 base 7 minus 2204. Four minus four is zero. Zero minus zero is zero. Man, this is becoming easy. Zero minus two. Oh, nope. Borrow one. So now this is a five. Borrowed over. So I really have seven that it splits into. However you want to write that. Drawings are fine. So seven minus two is five. Five minus two is <coughs> so it makes sense. Perhaps we do we're doing too many examples, but I don't think so. If it becomes really easy because of the number of examples, then it's a good thing. It's a good thing. It means you have to do do less on your own. Alrighty. Last one for subtraction, C, 3000 zero, 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 base 9, minus 2, 333 three, 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 base 9. Now that's not going to go well. So, 0 minus 3, nope, I want to borrow, but there's nothing to borrow. So I need to borrow from here. There's nothing to borrow. So I need to borrow from this. Finally, something to borrow, leaving me two. Now I'm going to draw them because I think in general it's less confusing. I do have nine for that column now, but I need to borrow one of these guys, and that splits into nine. Not nine. Eight. Sorry. No, nine, yes, yes, nine. I was right. For a second I thought, I can have nine. Yes, when I borrow it, that group of, that one thing is a group of nine individual little rocks. Now I have to borrow another here, which then splits into nine little rocks that I can now take three from and be left with six. Now I have eight rocks here, take away three is five. Eight rocks there, take away three is five. Two and two, nothing. We are so close to being halfway through the course. Isn't that scary? It happened so fast. Don't worry, the best half is still to come. Any questions on subtraction? Multiplication. And again, we're leaving that, leaving that second number that I multiply uh, by simple, small, so we can do the multiplication in our head. Exercise 710. First one is 5. Five six by seven times by two. So easy. Who can multiply by two? Two times six. Twelve. But I'm counting in sevens, so that's one group of seven and five left over. That's not a 15. That is one five. One group of seven and five. Two times five is ten. That's one group of seven and three padded with a zero. Or not, doesn't matter to me. As long as you line it up, the zero helps me to keep everything nice. Two, actually we should have the zero there. Because 2 times 5, 0 is 1, 3, 0. And that's what we're really doing. 2 times 5 again, 1, 3, 0, 0. Oops. 
Now I add them up, there shouldn't be much carrying over, if any. So easy. So, while I'm erasing, let's talk about the quiz. Five pages. First page, Roman conversion. See if it's valid. If it's valid, convert whichever direction the question asks. Now we're doing B. 8861 <coughs> base 9 times a 3. See, these small numbers make it so easy. 3 times 1, 3. I don't have to write a subscript if it's a single digit. 3 times 6 is 18, but I have to group it by nines. So that will be two groups of nine, no ones, and I've padded it with a one, uh, with a zero. So now I'm doing three times eight, so I'll pad it with these two zeros. Three times eight is 24, but broken up with nines will be two groups of, of nine, and how much is left over? Six. Then I'm going to do the same thing, but pad it with zeros first. Three times eight, 24 again, so it'll be a two groups of nine and six left over. Add them all up. Three, zero, backwards. Eight, eight's okay, base nine. Eight again, and two. Second page of the quiz. Babylonian convert back and forth. If it's valid, of course. Babylonian back and forth. Yes? Um, on the quiz, for something like multiplication like this, would we lose marks if we didn't write the nine yes. subscript on all the levels? Unless it's a single digit number. Yeah. But only one mark. If you miss all the nines, I'll still just subtract only one. Uh, C, oops, camera. C, 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 one, four, zero, one, base eight, times a four. Four times one, Four times zero. I can write eight there. It's a little bit irrelevant because it's zero. Four times four will be over here, so I'm padding that with zeros. Four times four is sixteen in groups of eight. That's two groups of eight and nothing left over. Now four times one will be over here, so pad it with some zeros because I'm really working in this place. Four times one is just four. Add all of them up. There's no carrying over. I'll just write down here at the bottom. There's very rarely carryover in the addition step of the multiplication. Yes? 